Hey everybody, give me just a second and let me make sure that I am live in all the right places. I see a few people hopping on, that is fantastic. Hello everybody, hello, hello. Let me just make sure I've got this link and everything where it's supposed to be. Right, I think I have posted everything everywhere. Let me just make sure everybody who asked me for a link has a link. Hello, hi, 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 Angelica. Oh, hello from North Dakota. I am all the way here in Cincinnati. I love seeing where everybody is from. That's so fun. Hi, Pam. How are you? Hi, Alexis. Okay, so I think we'll get started. Um, if you signed up with me to get the tracer, this is what you have here. And um, there are two sizes, and you can use whichever size fits your canvas best. And if you are going to transfer this um, with me, there are a few different ways you can do this. So um, the first way that you can do it, just, you know, choose whichever size fits your canvas best. I'm going to use the larger size here. And then what you can do is just scribble on the back with pencil. Or if you've got transfer paper like this, you would put it shiny side down and you would do that um, in between. So the, the flat side goes up, shiny side down, and then you would put this on here. And then I actually, as far as the tracer goes, give yourself a little bit of room because there is um, some grass down there. So leave about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch ish. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Glad you're here. Um, and you can transfer this either way. Now, if you don't want to do either of these, you can also just cut these pieces out with scissors and then trace around them. Um, it's a little more tedious that way than transferring, but totally your preference. The reason why I chose this uh, lesson here is we are about to kick off an event called Magical May and uh, we're going to do a month of fun magical creatures and designs. It won't be one every day but we're going to try to fill up the month as best we can. And depending on whether you use the, oops, I made this head too big, the large tracer or the small tracer, um, your dragon will be on different sides. If you want to change that, you can always just flip it over. Usually if you print, you can see through enough that you can, oops, why did I do that? Now I need to do this. <laughs> I lifted it up while I was tracing. Don't do that because then you won't be able to find out where it goes. Do, 
All right, so the first thing is we transfer the image. This painting actually um, goes fairly quickly. So we've got plenty of time tonight. Um, I'm going to go over mine with a sharpie just to make sure you guys can see really well on camera. You do not have to do this in person. Oh, his mascot is dragons. That's so fun. Yeah, and you can actually, if you've got different colors of paint, you can even change the color of the sky to match his school colors, really. That would be kind of fun. really like this design I think it's just I've had this this is actually um, a deco art design that I have permission to use and I just think it's really cute it reminds me of Huff the Magic Dragon which was One of my mom's favorite songs to sing to me when I was a kid. So I have super <laughs> fond memories of dragons and all this, all that fun stuff. All right, so get your design transferred. And the one thing I will mention, aside from paint um, and the colors that I'm going to be using, black and white, and then I've got two um, colors here for the sky. You'll see on my sample, um, I used phthalo blue and a purple. You can use, I mentioned dioxazine purple, but any purple will work. Purple and phthalo blue. And then you will also want a cotton swab and a cotton ball. And we're doing some of the dots and um, some of the clouds with that as well. So if you don't have one of those, just snag one of those real quick. And you can always use a paintbrush if uh, you don't have one. I'm all about substituting if you don't have uh, the supplies that you, you know. We don't always have every single supply that every supply list requires, and that is totally fine. Because you do not have to spend a lot of my money to make some beautiful art. Okay. <sighs> Let me switch this around. So this is my palette. Um, make sure you've got just a variety of brushes and let's get started all right so what we're going to do first is create this moon in the background and for that we're going to start with titanium white. Really you can just put all four colors on your palette. Since we don't have very many, that's what I'm going to do. But the first step here, what we're going to do is we're going to create the white moon and then we are going to blend it out into the purple and then the blue and then on the very edges just a smidge of black. Alright, 
So I'm going to get, I'm using a 12 by 12. And so I'm going to choose, I think this is a three quarter inch flat here. It's either a half inch or a three quarter inch. I forget. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just get a little water and I'm just going to wet the background just a little because I do want this to be able to be blended nice and smoothly. I don't want it to be sopping. Don't put so much that if you lift it up, it spills off, but just, you know, add some water there. And then what we're going to do is we are going to start our moon shape here with white, which is hard for you to see as I put this on, but and I'm just going right over that tracer because I'm not, um, right now I don't need to cover it. So I'm going to start with my white, dip right into purple. You want your purple to start right around the edge of the wings or a little farther. And I've got kind of this rainbow of purple here, right where it meets the white. I'm gonna, I tapped my brush in white and I'm just gonna add some white so that that purple right here is very light. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Dip right back into that purple. I'm gonna darken the edge of that purple. I want to be able to see the purple or the violet. And I just go back and forth, blending it into that lighter violet slightly. So we want some white, then we've got some light violet, purple, and then some purple, some pure color. I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to dip right into that phthalo blue, and I'm going to go, you can see with my paintbrush here, I've got about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to bring that phthalo blue down into that purple and just go back and forth so it mixes a little bit. You can even add a, a little purple again right over the top of that phthalo blue. And just go back and forth till it mixes and then start blending it outward. And then come in with some pure phthalo blue. Oops, you probably do want to go all the way to the ground here with your colors. I did not do that, and that's okay. I'll touch that up in a bit. So yeah, bring it all the way to the ground. If you did not do that because I didn't do that, that's okay. We'll just start from the beginning and touch it up. So since I am going to start back with my white and just add some color down here, I am going to clean off my brush. Your white. Blend it out into that light purple. We're really just blending this gradient so it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just blend it out until it feels right. You can always add more of a color if you need it or touch it up. Now I'm going to dip back into my phthalo blue. I want most of my canvas um, to be blue to my edges. I don't want too much black. The black is just going to be kind of uh, the very, the very edge. So blend that phthalo blue out.
to bed and watch on the replay it's nice to see you I know you've been really busy with acrylic April I've been keeping an eye on you because I've been doing it too all right so I've got my phthalo blue all the way to my edges and I'm just gonna dip in I don't need to wash off my brush dip in a little bit of the black and I'm going to grab my corners and then just kind of arch, arch like a rainbow, just up at the corners, blend it kind of into the edge of the canvas, just a little bit. We don't want to see too much black. This is all about shadows and the highlight of the moon so I just add that black right around that edge there if you go too heavy with your black don't worry just let it dry a bit and then we're add some blue over the top as well now mine ended up really dark. My sample was a lot lighter, but just to show you, um, what did I do with my sample? Now this one's a lot lighter. You really can use any background scheme that you like. Um, I use blue and purple. You know, if you're feeling kind of froggy, don't be afraid to change it up. If you go too dark, you can always add in, add in a little bit of white while it's still wet and it'll lighten it up. Now, if you're using craft paint instead of artist paint, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just know your paints might dry a little faster. And if that's the case, you might just have to add another layer um, if you need to adjust your colors. But I am not, I have a personal preference for paint, but when, when we're creating, there's no right or wrong. Acrylic paint's acrylic paint. Some are more expensive than others, some have more pigment than others, but we can always adjust and make it work. All right, so that is step one of our background. of white there. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to refine this moon and this is the step where you need, um, we're going to use the paintbrush and then we're going to move into a step with the cotton ball. I don't actually have a cotton ball so I think, I think I'm going to try it with a cotton pad. Really we just need some, something light to swirl some clouds in there but <clears throat> All right, the first thing we're going to do is take some titanium white, pure white, and we're going to really refine the edge of this moon. We're going to 
fill in the background with white. Yes, I know your canvas is white, but we're going to add some texture on top. So we want that paint to be nice and wet. And I am going over my outline, but I can still see it. So that is the trick here is we're going to hide some of these pencil lines or graphite lines, but just make sure you can still see it. And if the edge of your moon is not as tight as you would like it, you can always come through with some more of that violet and make it really evident, really obvious. Once you're happy with your moon, we are going to pull some titanium white to the side and add just a pinch of that, that violet or purple, just the tiniest bit. And this is where you're going to want your cotton swab. So since I don't have a cotton swab, I've got this goofy piece of cotton. Anywho. What we're going to do is swirl in some clouds. So first I'm going to take my cotton, dip it in titanium white. I'm going to offload it, which means I'm going to pat it onto a paper towel a little bit. And then I'm going to tap in with my cotton that's peeling. This is not the best plan. Tell everybody to have a cotton ball and I don't have a cotton ball. What a slacker. All right, so take your cotton and we're just gonna tap in some clouds with the titanium white. And I'm kind of doing it um, starting kind of behind uh, the tail of the dragon. And then on the other side, starting about halfway where the boy sits. Doesn't have to be exact, but we definitely are just kind of filling in this space on the lower sides. Now you'll notice it does pull up some of that background color. If your background color has dried on you, um, that's when we go back in with a little bit of this violet titanium white mix and we can just tap some of that in there as well. So tap it in your paint, offload it, and then make some misty clouds. You can go back and forth with your white and your violet until you're happy. So in those two steps, what we did is just um, define the moon and then we filled it in with titanium white. Then we used some cotton, a cotton ball would be ideal, um, and tapped out some white by dipping it in white, offloading it, 
tapping in some clouds and then um, if you don't have another enough color lift from the back we um, have a really light violet that we made with titanium white and just a pinch of that purple that you can tap into the clouds as well so that was the next two steps there I'm sorry you're having trouble with the stencil. If you um, send me a message on Facebook, I can make sure I email that to you. And then you have it. Sorry about that. I do try to have the links available in a convenient way, but I don't know. I have so many different platforms that I use. Sometimes I get confused over what makes the most sense. This is, we are about three quarters of the way done. Um, this painting goes super quickly. It's all about that background. Uh, it really is. So um, what we're going to do now is, um, I'm just checking to make sure I don't have any messages. Yes, Teresa, definitely you can watch this later. Um, this will be in the online paint night group. It will be in guide one. So you can go back to that guide one anytime and it will be there. Um, I also duplicate everything onto my YouTube channel as well. So um, this will be available. And the painting goes super quick. Um, just to recap what was done in the first couple steps. So, um, Really, we started out adding white to the moon and we blended it into purple, blended it into blue, and then we just added black around the edges. Um, so that was step one. And then step two is we added more white on the moon. We really refined the edge of the moon. And then we used a cotton ball to tap in some white clouds down here. And then um, some of the colors should lift off the background. If it does not, then you can use uh, this mix of, it's a really light, light, light purple, uh, titanium white, and just a pinch of violet. And that's where we are now. Um, and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add some stars in the sky. So that's what we have, our little cotton, swab for if you uh, downloaded the list um the it does say a cotton cotton swab you can also just use a paintbrush um as well but the first thing i'm going to do is add a shooting star so um i want it if this is my center i want it just maybe like halfway a quarter of the way from the edge I wanted to say there. So I'm going to put a little white dot there. And then what I'm going to do um, is just take a really thin paintbrush, dip it in water so it's nice and uh, the tip is nice and smooth. 
and then I'm just gonna pull that right out like it's a shooting star and then you can add in some stars to your background just using a paintbrush I like to have them different sizes so I'm gonna do some just in this titanium white tapping in some dots and then I'll tap in some larger ones with my my cotton swab my q-tip you can also use um, the bottom of a paintbrush as well to create some dots if you would like to do that it will look more natural if you don't think about the placement you just kind of go for it move quickly and vary the size so you don't you don't want them to be all evenly spaced and perfect or it won't look uh, like a natural sky there Alright, after you place all your stars in the sky, what we need to do now is just add in um, the silhouette with, with the black and then uh, we're going to add in the horizon line and the grass with black as well. So use whatever shape paintbrush suits you best. Um, I've got this really small flat that I'm gonna do all my edges of the silhouette with first, and then um, I can fill it in with a larger brush. Before I do that, I really wanna make sure my white is dry because otherwise it's gonna pull white into my black silhouette and it's gonna gray it out and it'll look kind of messy. So what I'm gonna do is use a heat gun for the sake of um, the tutorial, but if you don't have a heat gun or a hair dryer at home, if you just lift your canvas up, hold it at the end and kind of wave it up and down, that also will kind of speed along the process.
So I've got a nice thin lined paintbrush that I am going to do the edges of this silhouette with. My cat's in here sneezing. This background is a really pretty background um you know once you uh do it once you really can replicate it and change it in a lot of different ways um just by changing up the colors you know you could add um instead of using purples and blues you could use um you know yellows and pinks it would be more like a sunset you can change the silhouette certainly um, you know, if I've got this little boy sitting here, you can, I think somebody told me or somebody commented in the group that they were going to change it to, um, a little girl with pigtails. And I thought that was super cute, but you could even change the dragon. You know, there are a lot of different, you can look up clip art on the internet and switch it out. It could be a unicorn. It could be, I mean, just a, a whole bunch of things. And once you do that background, you you can change it and change the colors, and you've got you you know a hundred different paintings that you're able to make. And this is a very easy technique, just to have kind of this ombre blended background. I was also thinking it would be cute, you know, if the boy was sitting down looking at the moon and there was a dragon flying instead of a dragon sitting next to him. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of change it up and make it your own.
I can always tell when I finally find the zone. Like I just hit this zone every time I paint where it just feels kind of quiet and calming and meditative. <laughs> and that's when I start getting quiet in my videos. Since this main painting moved kind of quickly, I'll give everybody a minute to catch up. That way, if we're working on different sizes and whatnot, I'm going to scrape up some of this paint that I wasted. about wasting paint. I personally don't use heavy bodied paint very often, which is what I used for this canvas. And so I scooped out way too much. I always forget how far it goes.
right, if everybody's about ready to move on to the last step, all we need to do is make the grass and the horizon line at the bottom there, which is a super easy step. And so really what we're gonna do is just start by painting a nice thin line right across the bottom, about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. If you're using a large canvas, even an inch is fine. Use your judgment about where you want the grass to be. And then like you're gonna have to come up to the base of the dragon and the little child there. And it doesn't have to be perfect and smooth at the top because we are gonna add in um, some grass. Oh, absolutely, Angelica. You can, you can absolutely use a toothbrush to flick in some stars. I actually usually have one. There we go. Yeah, I've got one here. So if you wanted to um, play with the stars and make some splatter, you can dip your toothbrush. If you've got a toothbrush to use, you can dip it in water, dip it in a little bit of the white paint, and then splatter it on um, to make the stars. So there's lots of different ways to get the same, uh, the same look or a similar look. I really like doing splatter. So I'm surprised I didn't think of that. That's a great idea, Angelica. All right, so once you have your black across the bottom, we are just gonna um, make some grass. So I've got a nice small round brush and I'm just gonna flick upwards here and there in different directions to create some long pieces. Make sure you get the little area in between the dragon and the boy as well. Just a quick flick of the brush. Pull some of that black up. It's important to have some going all different directions so that it reads as grass. Oops, that was a really good one. My friends just make some final finishing touches um, anything you might feel like needs refining you can go through clean up the edges um, Angelica had a fantastic suggestion of adding splatter in the sky whatever it is you want to do to make it your own I might even um, grab some glitter glitter acrylic and I might add some of that into the clouds so do whatever feels right I got this purple that I got from Halloween I don't know if that would be too much Decisions, decisions. I do think that would be too much. I'm gonna use, I've got this Enchanted Shimmer. This is Deco Art. I really like the, the Deco Art Enchanted line. I use it a lot. And I think this dries kind of clear. I'm just gonna tap some of this 
into my clouds here just for a little extra pizzazz. You can't really see it until you move a little bit and the light hits it, but these enchanteds are super fun. Might even tap some here and I my moon. <sighs> yeah, that definitely doesn't show up on camera, but it's super fun here in person. It's nice and sparkly. Oh, a moon and star glitter, Angelica. That sounds super pretty. Yes, if you use it, make sure you post a picture. I really want to see that. That would be lots of fun. I'll have to look that up. Folk art glitter icons. I always need more supplies. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining. That's all I have this evening. Um, for the best buddies um, acrylic painting I can't wait to see what you make um, if you post it in the group feel free to tag me um, at painted cicada I love to see what everybody creates I love to see all the different variations it's one of my absolute favorite things so thanks so much for joining me I look forward to seeing you um, join me for the rest of the the goodies and lessons this month in online paint night. Um, I've been encouraging our presenters to come up with some really fun stuff for Magical May. So I will see you then. Have a great night, everybody.